sequel to a story that won't be written for another 45 years. Welcome to the Time Treadmill. I'm Ron, and these are my sweaty thoughts about Doctor Who. The Smugglers is a poster child for how well historicals can work. This is a pure historical set in the 17th century with no famous historical characters, no pivotal historical moment. It's just a setting and a time with inherent drama built into it. In this story, the TARDIS arrives in 17th century Cornwall Beach and the Doctor and Ben and Polly get caught up in the murder and intrigue surrounding the titular Smugglers. The smugglers themselves are a group of rogue pirates that are searching for Captain Avery's gold. And Captain Avery himself is the basis of the 11th Doctor story, The Curse of the Black Spot. The difference between the two story is whereas The Curse of the Black Spot relies upon alien technology and a whole science fiction plot thread, The Smugglers is a pure historical that requires nothing more than the personal conflict and drama inherent in the characters present. Early on, the Doctor is kidnapped by the pirates and taken on board their ship, while Ben and Polly are unfairly arrested for the murder of a church warden, who, it turns out, was a former member of the pirate crew. And from there, the story just practically writes itself. There's the corrupt town squire who's in league with the pirates, dealing himself profits. There's the poor local shopkeeper and other citizens placed in peril because of the existence of the smuggling ring. And of course, there's Ben and Polly fighting for their lives. Amusingly, Polly is mistaken as a young man and so spends the entire story being referred to as Paul. And I'm just here to say I don't know who on this planet could possibly mistake Annika Wills as a boy. But they put her in some plain clothes and she passes and so there you have it. This is now the second time I've watched this story and it was one of my big surprises in my first go around through the time treadmill. I just really, really enjoy this story, primarily because it's all about characters and motivations and the drama inherent therein. It doesn't require any robots or space invasions or super plagues or anything science fictional at all. It's just a good cracking story that makes optimal use of all the characters. Interestingly, this story is written by Brian Hales, who will go on to create the Ice Warriors and write several classic Ice Warriors stories. In my opinion, Brian Hayes stands along with Kit Peddler and Jerry Davis as some of the strongest writers for this era of the show, and I love everything he does. Unfortunately, this is a story that is completely lost. The BBC currently holds none of the episodes in their archives. And in fact, what few clips still survive actually exist because of censorship. Remember that in this era of programming, television shows were broadcast in other regions by actually being printed on reels and distributed to other parts of the world. And those other associates of the BBC might look at a particular program and edit it slightly differently. In this case, one of the local broadcasters found the content too violent for their own local standards, and so they edited out some of the most violent pieces, including in the first episode where the poor church warden gets a knife in the back. And of course, these stories being broadcast were on actual physical reels. The process of editing involved literally editing, excising portions of the film and snipping the remainder back together. And those excised portions wound up being the only pieces that were preserved for some reason. And so, thanks to censorship, we're missing all of the family-friendly portions of this show, and yet to this day we still have the violent, knife-stabbing, throat-slitting content that was so objectionable to the time. So yes, today and tomorrow I'm watching the loose cannon reconstruction of this story, and it's one that I can heartily recommend to you if you want to dip your toe into some pure historicals. And certainly if you wanted to watch Curse of the Black Spot and then follow it up with this to see the book ends, I think it would be an excellent double feature. And on that note, I'm going to wrap it up for today. I will see you tomorrow for the second half of The Smugglers. Music